You might be wondering, what does a typical Japanese neighborhood look like? Well, let's show you. For the entire 11 years that I lived in Japan, I lived in cities. So I lived in Yokohama, Kamakura, and Fujisawa. They're all in the Tokyo metropolitan area. So a typical neighborhood in all of those places were basically the same. Uh, of course, everyone has their own uh, character and atmosphere, but the way they're set up is basically the same. Now, uh, you have a lot of different kinds of housing. You got houses, apartment buildings, and that's typical for pretty much anywhere in a bigger city. And there are businesses scattered around there. There's sometimes there's these little businesses stuck in the middle of a housing area. Sometimes you'll find industrial areas with a house stuck in the middle. It's kind of weird. And I've even been like in one of the downtown areas of uh, Tokyo. Huge buildings and then there's a tiny little house. Very strange when you're thinking uh, compared to North American cities. So right now I'm in a pretty typical park. Now this is probably one of the barest parks. I mean it's dirt. There's a slide. There's a swing set over here. It's kind of dull, isn't it? You don't really see much of anything. Uh, a lot of kids will play in here. It uh, looks like they had lines. I'm not sure what they were doing here. But this is a very typical city playground. Mm, doesn't seem very nice, does it? Let's look at another one, though. So here's another park. It's just down the street, actually. Uh, a lot more green in here. Still got the dirt. But it just seems like it's, it's a nicer looking park, doesn't it? Yet, this park still has its open gravel sand area, but it also has this. And pretty much every park has one of these. A water fountain and a place where you can wash hands. As well as a lavatory. Got a toilet. The one that we were at before didn't have these. So here's a pretty typical intersection. You got houses over here. Kind of small, don't you think? There's an apartment building with businesses on the first floor. There's a drugstore. And about the only open spaces are parking lots, really. Yeah, not much. If we just look down the street, of course, we have vending machines. They are everywhere. So we got a Coke machine. Another one it says be best selection. Uh, payphone, not that many people use them anymore, and of course, cigarette vending machines. Yeah, you can still find them here. Sometimes you'll see snack machines. Oh, there's a mailbox. And uh, these community boards. Also, one thing you'll notice on houses is that they have a lot of frosted windows. That's because with the lack of space around here, you have, well, not much privacy. You also have things like this. A lot of very narrow passages. Some of them are actually official streets. I don't think this one is wide enough for a car, but there are some that are only wide enough for one car, but are actually two-way roads. They're not one way. Can you imagine trying to drive on those? Well, I have. Not fun. Some some places there are turnoffs where you have to go to the side. But there's so little space. You have to wonder about people's driving skills here. Right here, these buildings are industrial, right in the middle of a residential neighborhood. So yeah, very mixed. Due to space being at a premium, you get things like this. That's pretty much the gardens for some houses. Uh, there's not much space. There are no yards to speak of in newer houses. Uh, a lot of older houses have larger properties. They've been there for a long time. They have amazing gardens. Just down the street, we have one of these things. Uh, it's an expressway. So you might think of it as a freeway, but it's actually a toll expressway. You gotta pay to drive on it. Uh, you can see off-ramp. There's an expressway down here and one above. 
So, get lots of traffic here. And a little view of the skyline of this area, since we're up a bit higher. Not really impressive, really. It's just a typical neighborhood, isn't it? And this is a typical small river in the city. They're totally controlled, not at all natural anymore. The bigger rivers tend to be a bit more natural, but there are some that are completely controlled. They look more like canals. So that's about it. I probably missed something. Uh, if you have any questions about what a typical neighborhood in Japan is like, then please leave the questions in the comment section below and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Now we're leaving Japan tomorrow, so uh, this is going to be the second last video, I, I believe. I don't think we're really doing anything quite amazing today. Just go out, gotta do some shoe shopping, and that's about it. Uh, so I'm going to be doing one more video about our trip home. So look forward to that. If you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up, and please subscribe for more Japan-related videos. Believe me, I've got more coming, not just this. And also check out the videos on this side. You might find something you like. See you in the next video.